Hey everyone, welcome back to Terra Mater Gardens. Today we're shrinking down to the world of miniature ecosystems and meeting a common foe, the dreaded fungus gnat. These tiny flies might seem insignificant, but for plant lovers, they can be a real nuisance. So let's get down and dirty with fungus gnats. Fungus gnats, also known as sired flies, are members of the insect family. There are over 6,000 known species worldwide and they're most active in warm, humid environments. They're not dangerous to humans or pets, but they can be a real headache for gardeners. Imagine a tiny mosquito with a brownish black body and long thread-like antenna. That's the basic look of a fungus gnat. They're weak flyers, often seen hovering or flitting around houseplants and moist soil. The larvae are even smaller, translucent worms that live in the soil, munching on fungus and organic matter. Here's where things get interesting. The adult fungus gnats live for about a week, their main goal being reproduction. They lay tiny eggs in moist soil, particularly around decaying plant matter. The eggs hatch into transparent larvae, they feed on fungus and organic matter in the soil. This can be beneficial in breaking down compost, but in large numbers they can damage plant roots. The larval stage lasts for about two weeks. Once they feasted enough, the larvae pupate in the soil, transforming into adult fungus gnats. The cycle then begins anew. This rapid reproduction cycle, coupled with their love of moist environments, is why fungus gnats can quickly become a problem in houseplants and terrariums. Side note, before you start treating for fungus in your soil, fungus naturally occurs in healthy soil. It breaks down dead leaves and other organic matter, releasing nutrients that plants can easily absorb. It's like having tiny recycling crew working beneath the surface. This breakdown process also improves soil aeration and drainage, creating the perfect environment for happy plant roots. So while fungus gnats might be a nuisance, the presence of some fungus in the soil is actually a good sign. How do you know these uninvited guests have crashed your miniature garden party? Look for the infamous gnat cloud. Tiny flies hovering around your plants, especially near the soil, is a telltale sign. Stunted growth. Fungus gnat larvae feeding on roots can stunt plant growth and cause wilting. Fungus gnats thrive in moist soil. If your potty mix feels constantly damp, it might be a breeding ground. Don't despair. Here are some ways to combat these gnatty foes. The key is to disrupt their mo moist breeding grounds. Water your plants deeply, but less frequently, allowing the top inch of the soil to draw between waterings. What I normally like to do is to put um, make sure there's a tray underneath the pots and then water from the bottom. Let the soil soak up the water. That helps a lot. Yellow sticky traps placed near your plants can attract and trap adult fungus gnats, reducing their population, which I've used a lot. Beneficial nematodes are microscopic worms that prey on fungus gnat larvae in the soil. These tiny warriors can be a, a natural and effective way to control infestations. And this is my favorite way to do it, very easy. You just fill up a gallon of water, put a little piece of the mosquito dunk in the water, let it soak overnight, and then you water your plants or your terrariums, and you'll see that the populations die out really quickly. You can also use the sand method, which I've used before. It doesn't really work effectively on all plants, but you cover the top layer of your soil with a thin layer of sand, which can help adult gnats from laying eggs in the moist soil. Try them all. I pretty much do them all, except for the sand one I kind of moved away with. I, I have a bunch of pots still have like that sand berry on top, but I don't really like using it. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Here's how to keep fungus gnats from becoming a problem in the first place. Drainage. Ensure your pots have drainage holes to prevent water from pooling in the soil. Use a well aerated potting mix that allows for good drainage. Avoid overly organic mixes that retain so too much moisture. While compost can be beneficial for plants, be wary of using large amounts in your potting mix as it can attract fungus gnats. Like many of you, I've battled fungus gnats in my terrariums. Those tiny flies buzzing around and the thought of larvae munching on my plant roots were a real concern. I tried various methods, watering less, using yellow sticky traps, even repotting with fresh soil. The gnats seemed to persist. But like I said, the best method I found was using the mosquito dunk method this little donut shaped thing. Uh, it's intended for killing mosquito larvae in ponds, but 
I read online that they could also be effective against fungus nets. Now, I'm not a scientist, and I always recommend checking with gardening experts before trying new things, but I figured why not. And the results were interesting. Within a week, I noticed a significant de decrease in the number of fungus nets. It wasn't a complete eradication, but it was a noticeable improvement. And I continued to water with dunked water periodically, and the gnat population remained under control. I still use yellow sticky traps, but I have a lot of plants, a lot of terrarium, so it's, it's hard to manage them all, but it's not as bad as it used to be. Now, some people report that using the dunked water long-term can affect the pH balance of the soil. It's important to do your research and monitor your plants for any negative effects. For me, it was a temporary solution that helped control the gnat infestation, but I don't use dunked water all the time. Remember, I'm not a professional and this is just my experience. There are many ways to combat fungus gnats and the best approach might depend on the severity of your infestation and your comfort level with trying new methods. Believe it or not, fungus gnats can play a small role in the healthy ecosystems. The adults can act as pollinators for some flowering plants and the larvae help break down organic matter in the soil. The key is to keep their populations in check to avoid them becoming a nuisance to your plants. And that wraps up everything today. I'm trying to figure out how to combat fungus nets. Take and learn what you will. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content.